Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel ML for Analytics. I am Jyoti Dikshit and in today's video I will be talking about finding weekly sales in Power BI. So basically uh, this marks the starting point of our new playlist that is DAX Hacks. And in this particular playlist we will be covering various hacks or you can say various scenarios uh, that we often encounter in real life, in real world, in our offices, uh, in any of our freelancing projects or any, uh, any that type of scenario where we, uh, we may have encountered some difficulty uh, and we just want to basically find a method or we want to gain a know-how of implementing that scenario using DAX in Power BI or in Excel. So, in, in this playlist, we will be covering all these hacks basically. So, this is one of them, finding weekly sales in Power BI. So, let's move to demo. So, the end product uh, at the end that we will uh, be getting in this video is uh, this type of table where we will be having a starting date of a week end date of a week and the sum of sales amount corresponding to that week. So let's get started. So firstly I'll go to this view that is data view. Let me tell you first that the database that I am using in this particular video is Contoso database and it is basically provided by Microsoft and I will be uh, giving you the link to set up that database in the description box below so please check it out and uh, don't forget to um, uh, I mean set it up and then implement this scenario on your own also so that you can you can gain um, a good understanding of whatever we will be covering in this video. So, uh, fine, cool. Uh, first of all, I have got this fact sales table over here. Uh, so, I have got this from Contoso database only and as you can see, it has got various columns over here, sales key, date key uh, and the sales, uh, sales amount corresponding to each of these dates. Uh, which is given over here. So the sales amount column is given over here. So what I have done in uh, this case is that I have created a measure, which is sum of sales amount over here, and I'm using uh, the aggregation function and the iterator function summit over here. I'm passing the stack sales table as the first argument, and the second argument is the expression that I want to sum. So what this function does is it's going to iterate on each of the rows of fact sales and then it's going to calculate the sum of the sales amount corresponding to those rows. So this is the first thing. Uh, then what I have done is I have created a dates table over here and in this, in, uh, the, I did this by going to, by clicking, to, uh, clicking on new table over here and then renaming this table and writing calendar auto in this particular uh, table expression. So basically what it is going to give me is this table which is having just one column that is this date column and the first date uh, is going to be the oldest date which is there in the fact sales table and the last date is going to be the newest date, which is there in fact sales table. So uh, this is what uh, calendar auto function is going to fetch for me. Then what I have done is that uh, I want to basically obtain uh, the, the sales amount by week. So uh, in Power BI, we have various things like uh, what we can do is uh, it has got time intelligence, auto date time intelligence and uh, it is going to uh, you know create that hierarchy in case of dates uh, 
year comes first in the hierarchy, then comes quarter, then comes month, and then last week comes the day. But week week hierarchy is not given uh, in Power BI. So in order to uh, find out uh, uh, these weekly sales or when you want to create a weekly report, then obviously uh, for, the, for that particular case, you will have to make use of DAX and then only you will be able to achieve this. So what I've done is I have created a column, a calculated column, which is weekday at one. And as you can see over here, I have passed uh, the, uh, this DAX function that is weekday uh, to uh, to this particular calculated column as an expression, and the first argument of this weekday column is the date column that you want to find the weekday of. So uh, it has got a second expression also. So as you can see that if if uh, in the in case of return type, if I choose one, then it is going to take Sunday as the first day and Saturday as the seventh day. So by default, it is going to provide uh, the sun, uh, it is going to provide the weekday in, in a manner that uh, if on that particular date it was a Sunday, then it is going to give uh, one. And if it was like Monday, then it's going to give me two as the weekday. If it was Tuesday, it's going to give me three. In that manner, it's going to work. So this is what I have got over here. But uh, in the first case, what I want to achieve is that. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I'm going to just um, yeah. Okay. So uh, I basically want Sunday as the first day in my first case. So what I have done is uh, I have subtracted this weekday at one from my main date table, main date column. So what it's going to give me is uh, I just want to delete this first so that I can explain this to you. So from this date. Uh, it's going to subtract this two. So what uh, what I'll be getting is this date, that is 30th uh, December 2000, 30th December 2006 over here. And I can see that uh, on 30th December 2006, uh, uh, it was Saturday, but actually I want Sunday. I want Sunday as the uh, first day in my case. So I'm going to add one over here. So cool enough as you can see that 1st January 2007 is mapped to 31st December 2006. 2nd uh, January 2007 is mapped to 31st December 2006. In the same way from 1st to uh, you can see there is 6th January 2007. Uh, all of these dates are marked to 31st December 2006. And if I go over here, I can see that on 31st December 2006, it was a Sunday. So all these dates which are falling in uh, in this range from 31st December 2006 to 6th January 2007, all these dates are uh, basically mapped to this one date, as in uh, it's because the week uh, had a start on uh, 31st December 2006 and the Sunday fell on this day. So uh, this bucket is created over here. And obviously, uh, in this case, I am considering the week to be from Sunday to Saturday. That is, Saturday is going to be the last day for that week. So in the creation of this, uh, what I have done is uh, to start at Sunday, I have just added 6. So it's going to basically uh, map all these dates to the last uh, day of this week, that is 6th January 2007. Now suppose instead of uh, Saturday to Sunday, my weekly uh, duration or the week, uh, the working week that I am considering is Monday to Sunday, then in that case, uh, what I have done is I have passed two 
in place of return value argument over here. So basically, two uh, in if I pass two uh, in in weekday function, then all the days which had Monday, uh, which fell on Monday basically, they are uh, given one as the number, and Tuesday is given two. Uh, Wednesday is given three, so in this way it's going. So all the dates uh, which uh, which were for, uh, which had Monday as the weekday, they are mapped to one. So in this case, this is happening. So basically, now it's going to be the same over here. Uh, in case of like start at Monday, I have subtracted this weekday at two. Uh, from dates, uh, from date column of dates table, and I have added one over here. So as you can see that all these dates from first uh, January 2007 to 7th January uh, 2007, all these dates are mapped to first January 2007, as can be seen over here. So Monday to Sunday, all these dates are mapped to the starting date which is 1st January 2007 and the end is going to be on Sunday so this week is going to end on 7th January 2007 so that is what is created over here then after that what I did was I went uh, I chose uh, this model view I clicked on model view and I created a relationship between these two tables. I'm considering this dates, uh, the dates table as a dimension table. And this is obviously uh, my fact table. So uh, a one to many relationship is uh, created between them. So uh, the key columns are date column in dates table and date key column in fact sales table. So on the one side, uh, dates table is there and on the many side back sales table is there. So cool enough and dates table, any column in the dates table is able to filter any column in back sales table. Now I am going to go to report view and what I am going to do is uh, find, uh, I am going to click on this and I am going to expand these panes over here. And what I am going to do, uh, tell you is that, as you can see over here, that in the first first table over here, uh, the week that I am considering is obviously Monday to Sunday. So I have got all these dates over here, uh, starting at Monday, ending at Saturday, uh, ending at Sunday. Sorry, and uh, the duration. Uh, Durations are given over here. So 1st to 7th, 8th to 14th, 15th to 21. And I am able to get the uh, sum of sales amount as I am using the sum of sales amount measure over here. This is basically this visual, which is the table visual. So if you want to create this, what you can do is uh, let me delete this first, or uh, yeah, I'll just undo this. And I will just remove everything. Uh, fine. Uh, right now, only sum of sales amount is over here, and even I can delete it over from here. So I have got this visual over here. That is the table visual. And if I want to start at Sunday, then I am going to drag and drop it over here, or just click it as you want. I don't want this date hierarchy. I just want the date. So I'm going to click on start at Sunday and I am going to click on this uh, end at Saturday. So yeah, I select this only and I'll minimize this. And in case of fax sales, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this measure over here. So yeah, as you can see, uh, this is created. Uh, let me minimize this. Uh, Okay. Hmm. Let's go here. So I'm going to yeah decrease the size. Then I'm going to click on it. 
Now you can see that the sum of sales amount for each of these weeks is different. Obviously, it's going to be so because in this situation, I'm considering the same sum uh, of sales amount from 31st December 2006 to 6th January 2007. And in this case, I'm considering it from 1st January 2007 to 7th January 2007. So obviously, uh, there will be a difference. So the first week, uh, second week, they are different. The days are different for both these tables. If you want to add the uh, this conditional uh, formatting, then you can go to Format Pane over here. Just click, uh, just click on this uh, and uh, select this background color over here. And what can be done in this particular case is Okay, I'm going to start on something. No, I don't want it. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, uh, this is not started. Uh, I'm going to select on this sum of sales amount and then I'm going to click on background color over here. So, by default, it adds this. Uh, I don't want this actually. So, I will uh, choose a different color, maybe this if uh, this, the sales amount is low. And uh, this is my sales amount is high. So uh, I'll click on OK over here. And as you can see, uh, this thing is added. If you want to change the alignment, then you can go to Field Formatting. And you can choose uh, the alignment as center over here. Uh, OK, so sorry, sorry. Uh, in this case, I'm going to click on Auto only. I choose some sales amount over here and then uh, display in its up fine for me. Select the center over here and this thing is done. So this is how we can do, uh, we can find the weekly sales amount or any kind of weekly measure uh, in Fabio. So uh, I mean if your uh, week duration can be different I have only covered uh, the cases for Sunday to Saturday and Monday to Sunday. Your week can be from like Friday to Saturday or um, I mean any other uh, week. So it actually depends on you, sorry, Friday to Thursday. So it actually uh, depends on you uh, how you want to basically achieve it. So. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the core concept. Uh, it's just a matter of choosing the return type or return value, sorry, in the weekday function. And you will be able to uh, add or map those dates to uh, the starting date of your choice. So that's very easy. So guys, with this, I conclude this tutorial. Uh, I hope you like this tutorial. If you did, then please like this video, uh, please give me your feedback by commenting, uh, share this video and subscribe to our channel. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.